For the ones who work hard to ensure their crew can always go the extra mile. And the ones who get in early so everyone can go home on time. There's Granger, Offering professional-grade supplies backed by product experts so you can quickly and easily find what you need. Plus, you can count on access to a committed team ready to go the extra mile for you. Call, click Granger.com, or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. WBSM presents The Tim Meisberg Show. Streaming live on WBSM.com and the WBSM app. Call 508-996-0500. Send us app chat messages and open line voicemails using the WBSM app. Now, The Tim Meisberg Show. Welcome back in hour number three of the program here on Thursday morning. And a reminder, if you missed me mentioning it earlier, Mayor John Mitchell will be on with Chris at 11 a.m. today, midweek with the mayor just a day later. So he will be addressing this ballot issue with Chris uh, later on this morning. But right now, let me go back to the phones because Shawnee's been patiently waiting. Good morning, Shawnee, and thank you for your patience. Hi, Tim. How are you? Oh, hanging in, but I don't like all the stampness. It gets into my bones. It hurts. I it feel you bad. on that, yeah. I got a knee that acts up when it gets like this. We've had enough of this now. It needs the sun needs to come out. Um, anyway, um, it's going to be hard to get rid of Nanny DeBrito, I would say, because it's one of them things where it's who you know, how he got that job. I know that for a fact. So number one. Number two, um, the... Mary was talking about Walmart. Well, I was in J.C. Tenney, which I go to quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And I just don't think it's fair because here I am paying for everything that I get in there. And they're stealing like crazy in there. And I'm standing there because I talk to everybody in there. And the manager goes, um, um, there was a guy just stealing there. He walks right out. Uh, the, the guy th that was... Um, that told her about the guy that was doing it says it goes on all the time. I mean, it's not, it's not right. Well, I think part and, of, you know, part of the issue there, I shop there quite a bit too. I don't know that. I mean, unless it's undercover, I've never seen anybody there that store security. Do they, do they have security guards in that store? So she says, yeah, but I've, um, I don't really see it. And also, um, I says, well, what about the mall security? Once you, you, how it used to work is if somebody, what I thought was if somebody took something out of a store, they call, they can call the mall security and then they can call Dartmouth police. They're letting everything slide with that out there. And I'm paying through the nose. It's just not right. I mean, I, not yeah. that I want, I, I don't want to do that because I don't feel comfortable with that. Okay. But the bottom line is it's just not fair. It's not right. Like everything else in this world. I, I, oh, I'm telling you. I can understand if somebody's walking out of the store into the parking lot from, from that, that door, you know, the one that goes to the outside, and them telling their employees, listen, we don't want anybody to get hurt. It, you know, it's not worth you trying to stop somebody. Uh, and I understand that. That happens a lot in these stores because, again, most of the people that I see working at, at JCPenney, uh, not, you know, not to characterize anybody, but they, they don't look like they're very physically imposing. So, you know, the, you don't want them to get hurt trying to stop somebody that's shoplifting. But you're right. Once they walk out into the mall area, the mall security guard should be able to get them because they've got to go a distance before they can get out of the mall. So they should be able to, to, to triangulate and capture these people before they leave. But they never used to do that before. And you got persecuted. Now, prosecuted. Now, that um, the, after COVID came, this is all different now. Well, I think, it has to do with, different I think it has to do with, with changes in, in the insurance for, for the shoplifting. I think that's, that's what's kind of made this shift to say, you know, we don't, we don't need to track these people down anymore because we can just write it up as a loss. Really? Yeah, I think, I think that's what's happened. I, I have a couple of friends that work in retail, and I was talking to them about the stories that we heard about people that were just going into places like in San Francisco and, and robbing these pharmacies blind and then just walking out and nobody stopping them. And so I was talking about that with them. And they said, you know, most of the time it's just if you happen to see what they're stealing, write it down. But otherwise they'll get it when they do inventory. And then they just write it up as a loss and the insurance covers it. 
Well, um, I, I just don't think it's right all the way around. What is good for one is good for the other. Well, and you're right. It, and, it's still going to end up making things cost more for you when they have to raise the prices because of it. And if you're doing wrong, you should be prosecuted for doing it. It's just not right. And, um, and um, the other thing I wanted to say is that I really like the other setup better on your station, the sound bites that are coming on now. You know, the new thing yep, that yep. the other guy was talking about. Mm -hmm. I prefer the other one myself, but it's okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll mark it down as that again. You know, I, I, I didn't really have a choice, so. Okay, a lot of, a lot of changes going on, I noticed. Yeah, just making things. That's the thing is like even even if we had kept the same guy, we had reached the point where it was time to kind of freshen things up a little bit anyway because you you always want to change it. You never want it to sound monotonous and, and especially the news. You know, the news I think sounds great now and it gets people's attention when it comes in. So I think that, you know, anytime you can make things sound a little fresh and different, it sounds better. Okay, I'm just old fashioned. I guess I'm getting old. Okay. <laughs> no, not at all. All right. You Talk have a great day. Soon. Hi, you too. And and I think you know I think what Shawnee's saying there is you know she's she likes the comfort of hearing what she's used to and 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 that's the way for a lot of people to do it. But I can tell you in in the business you know a little bit behind the scenes information in the business they don't really like it when you let things stick around for you know they want you to change things up switch things up. If you use a certain intro for your show, change it every six months or so so that you um, so that you have a a. a fresher sound and i can i can tell you that um for a long time we didn't really have anybody that was focusing on that now that's part of my job is to focus on all that but there's a lot of things that i have to do in a day that i'm like all right i'm going to push that off so we were we were overdue for for freshening up the sound a little bit and i'm always going to try to find things you know as i'm learning because again this is a job that i've been learning on the fly uh there's no there's no boot camp that they sent me to, to to teach me all this stuff. And and honestly, I only picked up bits and pieces of it as I was doing other jobs here. So I would like learn little things, but I'm I'm just learning how to do more. So yeah, I will read commercials. I've been doing that for a long time. But I'm just starting to get into actually producing those commercials myself beyond just, you know, me reading it into the microphone. So as I'm learning little things and picking up things and then I'll come up with ideas and then we can change things up a little bit. You know, there's, there's lots of ideas that I have that I just didn't know how to execute. And then as I'm putting things together, there's other ideas that pop up into my head, just little things that make things sound different and more interesting. You know, like how, again, I don't want to get in too deep into this because I'm sure most people don't care, but just changing the news to say, instead of having the news anchor say, and in sports, but just putting in a little something, a little bit of music there to catch your attention. Same thing with the weather. You know, it just makes it sound a little bit, you know what it does? It makes it sound like one of those big New York stations, right? Anyway, 508-996-0500 if you want to call in and chime in. So again, Mayor Mitchell will be in at 11. He will discuss with Chris the issues that happened. I, again, Mayor Mitchell has been out of town, so he may just be getting caught up to speed with some of this. He may still be talking to the people that were involved in this and trying to find out more information. So he might not have all the answers by the time he comes in at 11, but he's going to discuss it. I, I, know, I know for sure he will want to, and I know Chris is going to ask him about it. So, And you will have the opportunity to call in and... and Share your questions or concerns with him. But if you missed the story, if you are just tuning in, we knew about what happened Tuesday morning in Precinct 1D with them not having Republican ballots to start the day and it taking about 40, you know, it was about 840 before, 740 rather, before they got those Republican ballots in. According to the statement that they provided us, there was eight people who could not vote on the Republican ballot until they arrived and seven of the eight returned. But then I also had found out yesterday morning from a person who went into Ward 1F to vote who told me that when they went in 
they were able to vote okay. They had no problems. People were vo voting Republican then. They had the ballots, but they were told by the poll worker that earlier in the afternoon, this was at about 6 p.m., this person went in. But earlier in the, in the afternoon, they had run out of Republican ballots, and it took over an hour for them to arrive. That's what this person told me. They were told by the poll worker. And I also noticed somebody commented on Facebook, on our Facebook page, where we asked if anybody was having any issues at the polls. Somebody commented and said two, uh, 1F ran out of Republican ballots. We reached out to the Board of Election Commissioners via the email address for Manny DeBrito, as well as John Darling, who is the spokesperson for the mayor's office. And we said, I, the question that I asked was, you know what, it, it's, it's, it's been a little while since I, I posed it. So let me just read that for you again. Give me one second here. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, so the questions that I sent over. Someone informed me that Precinct 1F ran out of Republican ballots Tuesday afternoon and were without them for over an hour. Was this true? What time was it and how long until they received them? Also, because this was a question that, that came up with some of the callers, also when one ballot is unavailable, is there a pause on voting for those taking other ballots as well? The response that I got back, which, again, I sent that email at about 6.30 in the morning, 6.34, and I got a response at 4.23. Now, John Darling was in communication with me throughout the course of the day to tell me he was working on getting me the answer. So, you know, I, 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 don't, I don't blame him for the, the lack of response. Also, it's the day after an election. The folks have to go and pick up any materials or signs or whatever they've got to do. Answering my questions is probably not the, the first thing on their mind to do when they're out there doing all that. Probably took care of these questions when they got back. However, the answer that I received, the Board of Election Commissioners has determined that voting in the March 5th Republican primary at the Christian Fellowship Center polling location, that's the one on Church Street there, was effect, and that's 1F, that's what we're talking about, was affected when Republican primary ballots were not available for a brief period in the early afternoon. The Board of Election Commissioners and the City Solicitor's Office have looked into the scope of the potential impact on Ward 1F voters. A total of two voters were affected and both returned later to successfully cast their ballots. The Board of Election Commissioners regrets any inconvenience and appreciates the efforts of the two voters who returned to participate in the election. A review of all polling locations is also being conducted as a prudent additional step. So that's the statement that I received. A brief period early in the afternoon. Not a direct answer to my question of what time was it and how long until they received those ballots, which I think is important information for you to know. There's questions that sometimes we ask as, as hosts here that is minutia that, you know, is probably not necessary to be able to, to, to share the story with you. This is very important. Knowing what time it was and for how long of a period, an exact amount of time, or at least as close of an approximation as they can get. I know, you know, not everybody's checking their watches. But to give us a rough idea or to at least confirm or, or to say that statement of it being over an hour is probably true or probably not true. And then the second part of my query about what happens when one ballot is unavailable was just not addressed at all. So read into that what you will. Maybe they missed that part of my question. Or maybe they don't want to answer it. I also reached out to the spokesperson for Secretary of State Bill Galvin. And I asked, you know, I said, I know that the state GOP, the mass GOP rather, the mass GOP sent a formal complaint to your office about what happened in 1D with the ballots not showing up Tuesday morning when the polls opened. I said, also, now we've heard about this other issue in 1F. Have you heard anything about that? Can you tell us what the next steps are and the response that I got back from Deborah O'Malley, who is the director of communications for the office of the secretary of the Commonwealth 
She told me, basically reiterated what Joanne Hodgson had reported. She heard back from the state GOP, the mass GOP, that the city's response to the Secretary of State's office about the 1D issue. I hope I'm not confusing everybody here because I'm getting a little confused too. But what they heard back about that issue with the ballots not being there when the precinct opened was that it was you know, the, the, the fault of the warden of the precinct who failed to report that the, missing, the ballots were missing before the polls opened. And Deborah O'Malley said, poll workers are trained to account for all the ballots before the opening of polls and report any missing ballots to the Elections Commission. So, yes, okay. She says, we will, of course, be following up with the city and their legal department to investigate and address this issue. But she also said, as of, I'd have to go back and look at the exact time, but I want to say like around 10 a.m. yesterday morning, as of that time, she said she had not, the secretary's office had not received any reports of a New Bedford polling place running out of ballots, though we have asked the city to investigate this report that we had sent over. So because I asked about 1F, that triggered the secretary of state's office to then ask the city to look into that, which they were already doing because I had asked. And she said, at this time, we have, not re we have received no complaints from any New Bedford voters about either of these issues. So if you were affected by this, whether you went back to vote again or not, if you were affected by this, I would ask that you reach out to the Secretary of State's office and just give them that information so that they have it in their files as they are looking into this. Because I, th I think they want to have as accurate an assessment of what happened as they can. And maybe they want to check in. Maybe they're looking at the numbers too. I know Gilly called in and said the numbers seem feasible to him. And maybe they are feasible. Eight people turned away Tuesday morning in 1D. Seven of those eight came back. That means one person was denied the ability to cast their ballot. And then two people affected in 1F when the ballots were missing, when the ran out of ballots in the early afternoon, and those two people came back. And I, I agree with Gilly. They could, that could be plausible numbers. But I also feel like they could also not be plausible numbers too. That that could be on the low side. But the, the bottom line here is we need... More information about how this happened, not not who did what, but what are the what are the procedures to at least make sure this doesn't happen again in November? Because in November, if there's an issue with Republican ballots in November, it's going to be a lot more uproar about it than there is right now. Five zero eight nine nine six zero five hundred. We'll be right back. All right, let's take a quick call here before we go into the newsroom with Phil. Good morning. You're next on WBSM. Hello. Hi, you're on the air. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't have hear the beep. Um, so I was calling in regards to what your subject you're talking about. So I had um, talked to people. I was. I. I am in one F. So I called the election commission. I guess downtown. And when I called first thing in the morning, when my friend is the one that reported on this problem that he had in, uh, at the Vibro Hospital, he, um, I, I took it upon myself to call them. And now when I talked to the lady there, uh, I didn't get her name the first time. So I asked if I was going to have any issues at, um, at CFC. And she says, no, you should have no problem. Why? why? Why are you asking that? I said, well, I heard that Vibro Hospital was having issues over there. And I said it. Uh, WBSM is reporting that. She said, "Oh, they don't know what they're talking about." So there's a conflict of interest there because she's telling us one thing, and then she's actually saying that that it didn't happen. So I want to uh, um, confirm when I went to vote at about four o'clock, basically four o'clock in the afternoon at CFC. Um, you read a letter saying they weren't given how long it took. Well, when I talked to the officer there. And the ladies that were working, they told me, I said, oh, uh, you guys, I asked them, did you have any issues here today? And they said, yeah, actually we did. I said, oh, you did? I said, because Vibro Hospital. I said, oh, yeah, we heard about it. She turned around and then I said, oh, really? I said, well, what was the issues here? And they said, oh, we ran out of ballots. And the police officer confirmed that. I said, well, how long did it take? She said it was about over an hour. 
So there's two people now, because you are not the person that, that, that told me that yesterday morning. So there's two people now that were told over an hour. Right. And so when I called uh, on election day, I called back election, the uh, election up to get the, uh, the person that I talked to earlier. And sure enough, I got the same lady. Her name was Kate. And Kate turned around and told me that, oh, there was uh, uh, that problem at Viber Hospital was taken care of in like 15 minutes. But see, on my first phone call, she said there was no problem. Now here she is. So you see, I don't know if there was, I, mean, I can't say there was nothing nefarious going on. Well, but it's entirely possible that they just didn't know about it. You know what I mean? Like that person might not have known about it when they said, you know, they don't know what we're talking about. But obviously we didn't know what we were talking about because we had to get statements from the election commission on it. And now the secretary of state's office wants to find out what happens as a result yeah, of the but investigation. See what I'm so. saying is the first time I called her, she said there was no, I don't know what they're talking about them. But then in the afternoon, uh, well, later on, I called an hour later. So when I called the first time, it was already eight something in the morning. See, you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So she, they should have known. I mean, they must get phone calls right away. And like, like somebody else called the other day, like when they first opened up, uh, I was hearing polling stations open up in fame and like they were there, like they had a report like at six o'clock in the morning. So an hour before everything was being opened, I'm sure that was going on in New Bedford. You didn't open up the box and see it. Come on, I mean, it, I mean, this is why people are getting discouraged to go well, out and, and vote. That's the and same. It, that's the same question it, I was asking about one F. Was you know, yeah. you, you, did, did they? It's not like somebody working at the polls waited until the last Republican ballot went out to then call the election office and say, "Hey, we need more." Like they knew they were dwindling. They knew they needed more. I'm right. sure they let them know well in advance and would have had time to have them all there before they actually ran out. So I just don't understand how that happened. But yeah. well, I, I mean, well, I, I don't want to disparage the people in the office because I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt on election day that they've got so much stuff coming at them that they might not be up to date with everything that's going on in well, all the different precincts. So I, well, I won't blame them, but the, the person in charge knew about it and should have had them correct. prepared and, and have information to provide to anybody that called. But you see what I'm saying though? Like, I mean, we're a small city and this has happened before. So, Something has to be done. I don't know. Well, and conveniently, the mayor was out of town. I mean, it looks just looks bad. It gives up. I mean, and now it's it's gone. It was up at the, in Boston. There was a other radio station that was talking about it, and it it, it, it looks bad on the city. We're a small city now. Picture that in a big metropolitan city like Boston and and Philadelphia. I mean, that's why people have uh, discovered. Ah, oh, my vote don't count. Well, yes, your vote does count. I get it, but you gotta you gotta I, get out and vote. You I, know. I, I don't know if you heard Ray's call this morning, but he was talking about how, you know, no, I didn't know. It, it was Joanne Hodgson who who was talking about this to the mass GOP who told them about it and who came on the radio with Chris. And, you know, you don't think that her husband, Tom Hodgson, reached out to Donald Trump and told him about it? You I'm don't, sure. Or, or, or at least, sure. you know, at least intermediaries that could provide him that information. So well, if Nikki Haley had won Massachusetts, Donald Trump would have put out a truth social post about how New Bedford, Massachusetts kept people from voting for him. And it would have been a much bigger story than it is now. Correct. Well, can I throw one more quick thing? Yeah. So I'm already hearing like my daughter works up in Boston. She works with a lot of uh, people in, in, the, in the office and all they're talking about. They're, they're young. She's 26. And they're all about her same age, maybe early, uh, early 30s. I don't know what's going to happen in this in the, in November, but they're already talking in there that they don't want Trump. I'm just putting it out there. They don't want Trump. They're going to do everything impossible. And literally, one person said, "If I have to vote three times, I will. If I'm capable of doing it." And this is scary. The scary is that people are thinking that way. And that's all I got to say. I don't know. <laughs> all right. Well, you have a good day. Thank you for the call. Thank you so much. Bye bye. And, and uh, listen, I make that. I stay make that statement every time. You know. Uh, every time I leave the polling place, I'll be like, all right, I'll see you in a couple of hours when I come back to vote again. Or I'll, you know, make the joke, vote early, vote often. But, you know, I, I, we, we know that there are safeguards in place. Hopefully, that will keep that from happening. Caller, hang on. I will get to you. But right now, I am making Phil Devitt wait. He wants to give you the news. On the other side of that, caller, we will take your call and anybody else at 508-996-0500. Take it away, Phil Devitt. <laughs> President Biden readies his State of the Union address. Texas wildfires put the cattle industry in crisis and resurrecting the woolly mammoth. From the WBSM Newsroom, this is WBSM News. 
President Biden will deliver his State of the Union address tonight, where he'll play up the work his administration has done on things such as infrastructure. Michael Kastner reports. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. A preview of the speech says the president will outline how he's making the wealthy pay their fair share. He'll also push other policies that could pick up support from both sides of the aisle, like helping veterans and fighting cancer. Guests at the event before both houses of Congress will include family members of hostages being held by the Palestinian militant group Hamas, with more than a dozen invited by members from both parties. I'm Michael Kastner. Former President Trump is inviting Nikki Haley supporters to join his campaign for the White House. Trump posted on Truth Social at the same time the former South Carolina governor announced she's suspending her campaign. We find the defendant, Hannah Gutierrez, guilty. Rust movie armorer Hannah Gutierrez-Reed has been found guilty of involuntary manslaughter in the death of cinematographer Helena Hutchins. Hutchins was killed when the prop gun held by actor Alec Baldwin fired a live round on set in New Mexico. The prosecution didn't hold back. She was negligent. She was careless. She was thoughtless. Gutierrez-Reed faces a max of 18 months in prison following Wednesday's ruling. Baldwin's trial is set for July. The Texas cattle industry is suffering severe damage from the wildfires in the panhandle. Agriculture Commissioner Sid Miller says at least 3,600 cows have been killed, and the number is growing. Miller says more than 500 houses and barns have been destroyed. The flames have also torched the grasslands, leaving cattle with nothing to eat. There's a desperate need for hay to feed the cows that have survived. Alabama lawmakers are trying to protect in vitro fertilization patients despite a recent court ruling. Certain IVF functions were shut down in the state last month when the Alabama Supreme Court ruled that frozen embryos should be considered human beings. Republican Governor Kay Ivey signed a bill yesterday protecting providers and patients from legal liability. The state court initially ruled that anyone who destroys frozen embryos could be held liable for wrongful death. Steely Dan touring keyboardist Jim Beard is dead at 63. Beard started touring with the band in 2008. His final show with Steely Dan was in January in Phoenix. An exact cause of death hasn't been released, but a spokesperson for the band said it was due to a sudden illness. And a company that wants to bring back the extinct woolly mammoth says it's made a major breakthrough. Texas-based Colossal Biosciences announced Wednesday it's created a set of stem cells from an Asian elephant, hoping to manipulate them into bringing the giant creature back to life. Mammoths went extinct about 4,000 years ago. While the project is in the early stages, the creature brought back wouldn't be the same as old mammoths, just similar. WBSM Sports, brought to you by Sparks Auto in Dartmouth. A full day of Boston sports ahead. The Red Sox play the Atlanta Braves this afternoon at spring training. The Bruins continue their four-game homestand tonight, hosting the Toronto Maple Leafs at the Garden at 7. And the Celtics visit the Denver Nuggets tonight at 10. Now, your ABC6 South Coast forecast. Rain continues across the area this morning. It will be tapering off to scattered and turning mostly cloudy this afternoon. In the meantime, this morning, mid-40s, the wind out of the south shifting to the west this afternoon. It will be picking up, gusting up to 35 miles per hour. And then as we head into the overnight hours, we'll be seeing another chance for some rain. And the temperature is in the mid-30s. The wind out of the north up to 30 miles per hour. From the ABC6 Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Sassi Del Carmen on New Bedford's News Talk Station 1420 WBSM. I'm Phil Devitt for WBSM News. Stay up to date with New Bedford's News Talk Station WBSM and get all of our content and breaking news alerts with the WBSM app. Welcome back in 508-996-0500 or use app chat on the WBSM app. We're going to jump back into the calls in just a moment. But before I do that, looking at a day like today, you're probably not thinking about solar energy, but it does matter. Doesn't matter. You could be saving money with solar, but there's a lot of gimmicks out there about solar too. So how do you know what to trust? How do you know what's the truth about solar? Easy. Just contact Isaacson Solar because they are going to give you the truth. They are a local South Coast-based company right here. They're in Fall River, so it's not like they're one of these fly-by-night operations that breezes into town, has people knocking on your doors, selling you a solar system, and then they get out of town so that when you have issues later on, there's nobody to contact. No, Isaacson is here to stay. They are part of the community, and they will answer all your questions honestly and truthfully. So if you want to find out what gimmicks 
are gimmicks and what is the actual truth. If you want to find out if solar is right for you, call Isaacson Solar or visit IsaacsonSolar.com today and see if solar is right for you. And if it is, they will give you a free, no obligation quote. Again, visit IsaacsonSolar.com. All right, let's go back to the phones. 508-996-0500. Good morning. Oh, you are next on WBSM. Hello. Hi, good morning. How you doing? Hi, I'm good. How are you? I'm all right. What's on your mind? Good, good. So I'm just following up regarding the issue yesterday with the voting. And um, so I do agree that while it might be small issues overall and perhaps likely errors, um, not necessarily conspiracy or otherwise. However, I do think that, you know, the times that we're in, um, we, we would expect, and I think we're hearing the voices of the taxpayers, at least I do live in New Bedford, like we should expect a certain attention to detail. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we're, we're entitled to that. And I think there has to be, you know, some level of accountability here to say, to just brush it off as a mistake, I think is, is wrong. I mean, I expect, you know, working corporate jobs, I was expected to meet certain standards, you know, in, in details of, of my job. And I would expect the same from particularly this is a presidential election. This is, this is, you know, this is an election year that we're in. It's been a tough time on a lot of people um, with the doubt that's been raised about the, you know, the validity of the elections and all of that. So, so I, I see it as a mistake, possibly. Yes. However, I do believe that as taxpayers, we are entitled to, to somebody taking action that this does not ever happen again. And listen, you, know, if you have, yep. I'm sure the people, the hardworking folks that work in the elections office roll their eyes every time they hear somebody talk about, you know, the election in 2020 was rigged because they know, you know, all the safeguards that are in place. They know all about it. I'm sure they roll their eyes at it and they think that it's ridiculous. But here you are giving people more fuel for the fire, eroding that trust over these dumb mistakes that should have been preventable. Right. We all have to keep ourselves, I think, in check, you know, in what our, our thoughts and where we're going with those thoughts and, you know, our whatever compass guides us. And, and I think we all just need to be solid in, in, in how we stand on things. But but if we're going to go into a polling and you're not going to have a ballot, I mean, you know, you know, please, come on. That's I mean, I don't care. I can you can embarrass me all day long. I don't care about any of that. But this is a this is a presidential year. So, you know, I hope that Mayor Mitchell is going to respond. Um, there is a tendency to place the responsibility and blame when there's issues that happen upon department heads. But, you know, Mayor Mitchell is the chief executive officer of the city of New Bedford, so the buck's got to stop somewhere. So I think I'm hoping there's an answer, um, you know, and some oversight or some somebody that can speak to taxpayers and let us know, um, you know, you, that, that you see the city of New Bedford as a valid group of individuals that we are, and we are going to start to express our voices more because there is a lot at stake for families. You know, if the government's going to keep dipping into our pocketbooks, then we're going to, you know, along with that, we're going to expect services to increase along with that, as far as I can tell. Um, but I do appreciate your time. All right. Thank you so much for the call. Thank you. And, you know, to the, you know, what I've seen comments on social media un under this story where people will say, you know, you know, the title says something like, you know, Republican ballots not available and somebody will comment underneath. Good. Well, I would just say what happens in November if, you know, ballots go missing or aren't scanned into the machines or there's some sort of issue with ballots that were for Joe Biden. You wouldn't feel that way, right? You wouldn't say good. The bottom line is everybody in this country that's over 18 and registered to vote should have their vote heard and should have the ability to vote when they show up at the poll, period. Doesn't matter who they're voting for. Doesn't matter, you know, what their beliefs are. They have that right and that ballot should be there for them and they should have the, the, the trust that that ballot is going to be cast correctly and count. 508-996-0500. Good morning. You're next on WBSM. Jim, you couldn't say it any better than what you just said. But... And, but, you know, it, what, what, what drives me crazy about the New Bedford people is that it's almost like they look for, you know, these conspiracies like everybody's against the Republicans and they're trying to screw them and trying to hide ballots or not give them ballots and all this other foolishness. And they make, you, you know, I, I totally understand that everything should be done right. Um, but, you know, no, you know it's, it's the primary. Nobody's trying to screw the Republican Party, over, and, and, over, and I, or somebody, 
And I agree with you. I agree with you 100% on that. This was not done intentionally. This was not a conspiracy. This was just ineptitude. But the problem is when you know that there are people who are looking for that conspiracy, and, and again, it doesn't have to just be people who are voting Republican. There are, there's right. just that, that fringe of people that are always looking for a conspiracy no matter what. When you know that those people exist, that's the reason why you want to double check and triple check before you're right. doing something I, so that you're not I, giving I, fuel to that fire. Absolutely. I, I totally agree. If I remember, and, if I recall correctly, Manny DeBrito was the one complaining about people that are sitting in their basements calling into talk radio with these conspiracy theories about elections. You, that was years ago that he was talking about that. So if you're going to be bringing that up and, and, and pointing that out, that means you're aware that those people exist. And that means you're still not making sure that you're not giving them, you know, ammunition for that argument. Right, absolutely. I mean, I, I, you know, I just go sick. So I get so sick and tired of listening. And it's the same voices all the time that that, that have these these complaints, no matter what. I mean, I, I think if you, you fired everybody, including the mayor, right? It, it, they, they still wouldn't get happy. happy. Well, that, that guess, might be I true in, in some cases. People, but I hate to see who marries these people. I will, I will say this though. I am hearing the last couple of days, both on this show and on the other programs, I've heard a lot of voices that I don't recognize calling into the station concerned about this issue. And not all of them are concerned about it because they wanted to vote Republican. The, there's, there's people who are concerned about an ineptitude to run an election properly with, as, as Barry has called it many times, the most important election of our lifetime coming up in November. So I think that that, and, and again, I'm, I don't mean to pick on Barry for that. I just think every election is the most important one. A everyone is always more important than the one before it. But um, I just tease him about that a little bit. But I, I think one that one last thing, people one are last concerned. Thing, one last thing. Uh, there were some people that called up and they were saying there wasn't enough signs out there and all this other stuff, right? I'm, I'm on the road and I went to buy about three or four polling places and they, all they had was the regular you know, sign out there saying, like, you know, poll five or precinct five, and that's it. They didn't have, like, posters on every corner saying vote here and all this other stuff. The way the people in New Bedford be complaining and say, there was only one sign out there. There should be signs everywhere. You know, come on, give well, me a break. But, uh, the concern is in some places, like at CARE 1, there was road construction. So there was no signage to let people know that they could still, from what people have called in and said, there was no signage to let them know that that precinct was still open. There was lines directing them to go through the parking lot of Walgreens, but there was nothing there to indicate that the voting was still happening there. So I understand, I understand that concern. And uh, from my understanding, too, apparently the city has the signs because they put out vote here today, the day before the election last time. So if they have the signage, they should be utilizing it. This is true. This is true. But I think we're on the same page anyway. Anyway, right. I'll, I'll let you go and let Thank other you people call you. Thank you for the call. And uh, I do have to take a break here. Caller, hang on. I will take you as soon as we come back from our quick break. We'll be back in a few moments. Looking for some extra money? If you're looking to earn some extra money, if you're looking to have a job that will allow you to still be home with the kids when they're home from school, well, one of the best jobs that you can have, if that's the way that you're looking to, to schedule your life, Tremblay Bus Company. They desperately need school bus drivers, monitors, and van drivers. It's a great job for retirees, for stay-at-home parents, or anyone looking to earn great pay while supporting local students. And I know what you're thinking. I'd love to do it, but I don't have a CDL. Well, don't worry. They are willing to train you if you are willing to learn. So if you want to find out more, visit tbcbus.com. That's Tremblay Bus Company, TBC, tbcbus.com to find out more. All right, let's go back to the phones here. Good morning. You're next on WBSM. Good morning. What's on your mind? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, something they did this vote. I've just come on and I started hearing you were talking about the voting. They, on the roster, they took my name. And they checked it off, and they put, when I took the paper, the voting ballot, they marked Republican next to my name, which I am. Uh, and then they did the same for the next person. And I said, why are you putting that down? Well, we have to keep count. I said, then you keep a separate paper and you mark a, a slash as one under an R. And then under a D, you put a slash. Until you get five, you put a cross. And you, that's how you count. What you're doing is identifying who is voting what. And our vote's supposed to be secret. 
But you're already identified if you're registered as Republican. They already know that you're Republican. I know I am, but what about the independents? Well, that's to keep yeah, track of what, what, what ballots that they took. Say in, well, you know, I just... See, this is what I'm know, hearing. This know. is what I'm hearing from Republican voters: is you're finding reasons to get upset and offended when it's just no, the way no. things have always gone. I'm confused because it's different than it's ever been. I've never had anyone do that before, and I've been voting. Do you since know I that? Was, you know that for a fact that nobody's ever done that. Yes, because I would watch them mark that I got my ballot, but they wouldn't put what that ballot was down next to my name. Well, would mark a check. I will put this down so as another line through it. I'll put this down as another question we should ask the election commissioner when he doesn't call. And one thing I'd like to say, I've moved, they've moved me three times since 2020. Three, three different ballot places. I was at Parker Street and then they moved me to, oh, what's that place down the street from it? That little adult enclave there uh, near the graveyard and then they've moved me to Carney Academy the school across from Carney Academy which you have to go around back behind the trash cans and you'll see a flag against the wall in the corner I I, got to hold you there because I got to take a final break here before I run out of time but um, I, I know they've been moving people around quite a bit, and uh, and it's been confusing for people. I got to just hold it you is. there, though. You have a great day. Thank you. I God do. Bless. You too. I do have to take this quick break. I'll be back in just a few seconds to wrap things up. For the ones who work hard to ensure their crew can always go the extra mile, and the ones who get in early so everyone can go home on time, there's Granger, offering professional grade supplies backed by product experts so you can quickly and easily find what you need. Plus, you can count on access to a committed team ready to go the extra mile for you. Call, clickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done.